Famed boxing personality and trainer Teddy Atlas goes in on Tyson Fury coming in at 273 in the Deontay Wilder, Wilder Fury Plus Part 2 weigh-ins. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang, gang, notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats, channel donations, the Venmo donations, the Cash App, and the Patreon family. We working. Sign up for ESPN Plus below using my link. It definitely helps the channel when you use that link. You can now package ESPN Plus with Disney Plus and Hulu, all three services, one price of $12.99 a month, or you can get ESPN Plus individually using my link. All of it helps the channel. Let's get it. Boxing trainer to 18 world champions, ESPN commentator, motivational speaker from Staten Island, Staten Island's own Teddy Atlas on his verified page. Has some things to say about the Wilder Fury. He says, when does a fighter not remove his shirt at the weigh-in? When he's not in proper form. You cannot consciously do that. Then say, I put on the weight to help me. Then why hide it? So he's questioning Tyson Fury's decision to not unveil, you know, unveil the, the final product at the weigh-in. He also says, I've been saying on ESPN that something's wrong with Fury's psychology, and now he weighs 273 pounds. I don't want to hear how it's part of a plan. How'd that work out for Andy Ruiz Jr.? I believe it's a sign of where he is mentally lost. Hashtag Wilder Fury, hashtag Wilder Fury 2. So he's saying he doesn't like the, the psychology behind um, you know, the decision to come up and wait. Right, he's saying when since when do you like not show the finished article in when you step on the scale because you just came at whatever weight you wanted. Listen, great fight. Teddy Atlas also has a prediction. Make sure you check out his show. You know, I'm not going to play it for copyright reasons, but you know, he'll break it down. Uh, it's a great fight, it's a big fight. The turnout was marvelous and great. Better than Canelo's last. You know, I say Wilder's the face of boxing. People got mad. But look at it. Wilder and Fury, the two of them. Wilder's the top build athlete on this promo. And Fox has done a great job promoting. ESPN does, has done a good job as well. But I think a lot of that push was from Fox. Being on Fox is the mass singer, Super Bowl, NFL, playoff games. You know, things like that. So Wilder's the top build fighter. And that's just what it is. That's like full cold hard truth. And... The turnout was great. You even seen people like Teofimo. He said, this is the craziest like weigh-in that I've been to. He said, I ain't been to like the Mayweather weigh-in, so I can't judge it to Floyd's. But he says, in terms of like modern-day weigh-ins that I've covered or like went to you know, as a fan, he says he, he thinks that fight was crazy. And I, I talked to people who are in Vegas right now and said the same thing. They said the turnout was crazy. You've seen on the TV. You see people like Terrence Crawford, Steve Nelson. They were interviewed like, wow, you know. I hope my weigh-ins look like that someday. That's what Steve Nelson said. So, man, I'm looking forward to it. It's a great fight. Back to what Teddy Atlas is saying. You know, he's. I thought he had a good game plan with a lot of his fighters. Tim Bradley in the Brandon Rios fight. Vaudstick versus Better Beef. Even though Vaudstick lost the fight, I don't think it was because of Teddy Atlas or anything. Better Beef just, you know, he's very powerful. But there's looking like a mental lapse. There's a lot of pressure on Tyson Fury. And I, um, you know, it's weird because I actually feel like there's more pressure on Tyson Fury because he's the one that rose up and Wilder's the champion, but it's already perceived that he's not skillfully or the better boxer. So, you know, unless you think Tyson Fury is going to knock Wilder out in two rounds and all this crazy stuff he's saying, then people are going to be looking at Fury the perceived better boxer with the better, you know, defense and skill set. And you got to stay patient, disciplined, switched on. Can't, you know, blink for a split second without possibly getting hit by Wilder. And he, you know, he has Thanos power. Young Banos, Black Thanos, Banos, you know. So I think the, per the really the pressure's on the guy to box. You got to outbox this guy. The Wilder's not like 
Ruslan Provotnikov or Kovalev um, in, in terms of his style. His style is, people keep talking about Fury's style being awkward, but I think Wilder's just as awkward because just like these screen caps show, look, glove too low, you know, this is a, <laughs> this is a guy with Cuban amateur experience. The round's about to end and within seconds, boom, this is what you're seeing. And then a ton of gallon of sweat flies off of his head. And then now he's on the ground, unconscious, you know. So Fury's going to have to box increasingly. And look at look at the shape that Luis Ortiz was in. And speaking of shape, Luis Ortiz actually shrunk and looked better at the weigh-in. And I went to this particular weigh-in. And he dropped pounds from the first Wilder fight. So I thought that was a wise decision. And he looked sharp for six rounds. Meanwhile, Tyson Fury for whatever reason, decided to go up in weight. You know, he went up in weight, said, I want to weigh more than the first fight. I just don't see, I don't see how that's like what, what the point is for Fury to weigh more. You know, he's a big guy, you know, but he hasn't weighed this much since the Safiri Safiri fight and Wilder is no Safiri Safiri. Me, Wilder, meanwhile, Meanwhile, Wilder, that's kind of hard to say. Meanwhile, Wilder looked in tremendous shape and he's kind of more in a normal range. You know, I thought the first fight with Wilder, I thought he came in exceptionally low. Like I, I didn't I didn't actually prefer him to be as light as he was for the Luis Ortiz fight or the Tyson Fury fight. You know, that's just where he came in. But he looked like a monster on the scale. Look at him. He looked like a monster at this weight. You know, very athletic. He don't look like like bulked out like crazy. He still looks lean. You know, he just looks kind of like a basketball. Everyone calls him a basketball player and all that. So I think he's more in his depth of weight than Tyson Fury. I understand Tyson Fury has fought at like the 270s and things like that before. See, look, Wilder still looks loose. He's dancing and stuff. He's still like, even with the... Even with the um, hoodie, he just looks super lean. Some people would even say skinny until he unrolls and then you see he's like all muscle. You know, Tyson Fury, I just don't really understand. Just like Teddy Atlas, I don't understand the decision to come in that heavy. And another reason I don't understand it is because Tyson Fury claims that he whooped Wilder so badly in the first fight. Then why would you need to move up and wait, change your cut man, change your trainer? Like these things don't to me don't make sense. You you're making all these changes, but you think you whooped him. You know, meanwhile Wilder's out here looking shredded. Like, look at that looks like regular Wilder. He just looks like in shape and, and muscular. You know, he didn't look like he overdid it. He didn't look like he was trying to catch up to Joshua's frame, you know, and weigh 255, 260. He doesn't look like it's a bodybuilder. He just looks like an athletic, in shape, tall dude. And I don't know. We're going to see. But Teddy Atlas, he says he don't like the signs. And the other thing that Teddy Atlas is saying that I've been saying, new media, digital mob, is like, why is he why is he not taking off his shirt? And like basically questioning where Tyson Fury is mentally. Let's say it, read it again. Teddy Atlas says, I've been saying on ESPN that something is wrong with Fury's psychology. And now he weighs 273 pounds. I don't want to hear how it's part of the, the game plan. How did that work for Ruiz? I believe it's a sign of where he is mentally lost. That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm telling you, I really strongly feel this way. I feel his team, uh, Javen, Sugar Hill, Andy Lee, they are sending this man out there. And they did their part to try to get him in the best shape possible. But they're sending him out there like Bon Jovi, living on a prayer. They're sending him out there with um you know expect the worst but pray for the best type of mentality i don't feel like the team has been really confident like fight week listening to him. andy lee was doing an interview and he was like yeah he's like can tyson fury get a knockout in the second round he was like um sure i, I mean i guess and he, he just sound real meek so i you know i doubt these are all highly trained you know de niro level actors where they're just getting into you know, some mind game. It just didn't sound like they sounded confident, like they know what they actually to expect. They know Wilder's a beast. Wilder is within his target range because, again, 
just look at the simple facts. Wilder hurt Tyson Fury, was outweighed drastically, came in to a point where you're fighting a seven foot tall dude and you're fighting him weighing 212 and he weighed 256 and a half. So now Wilder bulked up a little bit more as he has been in his last couple fights. You know, you look at the, the Dominic Brazil. So it's not like he just did this massive jump and that was it because that wouldn't be good either because that you know you never know how the added weight but wilder has continually been eating a little bit more you know managing his nutrition and staying higher weights than that year where he fought tyson fury in the first fight and the year where he fought luis ortiz so 2018 or whatever he has consistently been you know fighting fighting at that you know kind of within that range like Wilder is six foot seven. See me as a tall guy myself, I can I can relate to this. My weight, because I'm big and tall, is I can fluctuate. I can fluctuate, you know, easily six to 12, 13 pounds on any given day. You know, if I wake up, you know, if I have some clothes on, you know, things like that. So that's not that big. Like he weighed 224 roughly, 225 versus Dominic Brazil. And then now Wilder's five, six pounds more. That's not bad. Tyson Fury just went from, he he went from whatever he's been weighing, 256 in the Wilder fight, all the way up trying to bully Wilder or bring the fight to him. We'll see how it works. But to me, it doesn't sound like um, a strategy that makes sense. Like, I don't see why that would be the game plan. You feel you whooped him and outboxed him and beat him 10 rounds to two, right? And you felt you were doing great so why bulk up I, it just doesn't make sense to me why do you need to bulk up i can understand changing the strategy but why does the strategy mean you have to change your weight you can at 256 you still outweigh wilder so why wouldn't you weigh closer to that 260 255 you know somewhere in the sweet spot and just change the strategy to try to knock them out because adding weight is not necessarily going to knock somebody out that's not how it, that works you don't just add weight and gain power some some people even lose power adding weight because it makes them more sluggish or you know their body is not equipped to deal with a certain style like a rugged puncher like wilder and get out of the way of shots quite as fast you might lose some something in moving up and bulking up especially if this goes some rounds and you have and fury hasn't done this whole miraculous second round knockout thing then i think it's going to be worse and worse as the fight carries on because wilder has game changing power he believes that he believes in himself he doesn't have to if he hasn't knocked out fury early or hurt him bad he just has to stick to the game plan don't fall into fury's um games you know don't be bothered with tyson fury's flaunts and taunts and you know showboating and stuff and just keep staying in the fight and I think that's what he's learned. I think that's his learning curve from the first fight and his last two fights with Brazil and then Luis Ortiz. Man, I'm picking Wilder all the way. Look, Wilder by devastating KO. I knew Fury wasn't going to be ready. That's why he keeps saying Ortiz is the best opponent for Wilder, not Fury like some people. See, that's what I said. I feel like Fury, I mean, Wilder versus Ortiz, to me, that was that was like a scarier fight, you know? That was, a, to me, that was more because Ortiz has legit power. Bulking up in size doesn't make you stronger. And I think Fury's game plan is to try to lean on Wilder, but Wilder is different, you know? Wilder is a different person. Like, you can't just lean on He's like, he's still a big man, and he bulked up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't think it's going to work like that. Like, I, like even the Klitschko. Klitschko and Tyson Fury both do that. Where, like, you see Tyson Fury versus Steve Cunningham. He... He's seven feet tall almost, and he's fighting a cruiserweight who moved to heavyweight, and he's putting his body weight in him. Of course, that's going to take a lot off you, you know, because it's zapping your energy. Um, also, Otto Vilene fight. He did all that, and Otto Vilene still had the conditioning. He was inexperienced at the highest level. He still had the conditioning to go the full distance and never was knocked down. So Fury adding, you know, 20 pounds, you think that you're going to just lay on Wilder and rough him up? When he has all that power, all he has to do is get off, like, you know, step back. Increase his step back game. He can fight off the back foot, generate power off the back foot. And Fury, his first fight, he made Wilder miss, but he didn't make him pay. So now if the game plan is to just plow forward, then you become an easier target.
because there's more openings. We'll see. You know, we'll see how it plays off. But I, I don't really like the weight jump. I've heard other people like Tim Bradley, I think, and Andre Ward. They said, oh, we heard this is before he stepped on the scales. And they said that, you know, I seen the titles. I didn't get to watch everything that they said. But from the titles of the videos, they were saying, I don't like Fury adding weight. And Bradley even picked Wilder to win by knockout. You know, so I don't understand the weight increase. And I, I really feel like the, the best thing you do as a fighter is do what you're good at. If the Sugar Hills team is like, hey, let's just back him up, bully the bully. You're, you're trying to fight Wilder at his own game. What made Fury successful was making Wilder miss and, and being at a certain weight where he can evade and dodge shots. Wilder is fast. Well, like I said, I, I'm just ready for the fight. We'll see. Shout out to Teddy Atlas. Let me know what you guys think. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.